stunning human drama playing out a half mile below the Earth's surface, where right now there are 33 men buried alive. They have been down there for three weeks, ever since a cave-in at the mine where they make a living digging for gold and copper. And for 17 of those days, they were presumed dead. But on Sunday came the first miraculous signs of life. And now, thanks to a rescue probe, they are getting air, nourishment, and passing messages. But bringing them back into the light could take three months. Jeffrey Kaufman has the latest from the mountains of Chile. Again today, the families were lighting candles and saying prayers for the 33 husbands, fathers, and sons they have not seen for three weeks. This makeshift community at the gates of the San Jose mine overflows with shrines and signs honoring the miners trapped half a mile below the surface here. Today, we learned that those men have been told the sobering news that getting them out is not going to be easy or fast. For the first time, we talked to them yesterday about the time frame that is involved in this rescue operation that, that as, as you may know, is a three-month period, 90 days, beginning from now. Carol and Nervaya's husband, Raul Busto, is one of those miners. Que bueno. She waited for 17 days to find out if he was alive. She is undeterred. Yes, I can wait here for months, she says. The miners can survive, too. They are strong. They know we are sending our love. I came here to bring my husband home. She sent a letter down to her husband. He wrote back, You know that the words that you sent me made me cry. Well, I don't know how to tell you that they're always with me. God left us alive by a miracle and with a purpose. This kind of pain is much easier to tolerate, she says, than the pain of not knowing. It's terrible, she remembers of the days after the collapse, like the whole world has toppled down on top of you. I've cried a lot. I know this isn't the first time that this has happened, but when it touches you, it's different. The mine collapsed on August 5th. Immediately in this country that has some of the biggest mines in the world, teams of engineers and experts methodically searched for signs of life. Seven times they drilled holes to areas where they thought the miners might be sheltered. An eighth attempt was made early Sunday. Christian Astudillo was the geologist supervising that eighth drilling operation. At 6 a.m. Sunday, we realized there was a sound, he says. We stopped work. We heard them hitting the metal cylinder. We knew the sounds were being made by people. It was a very emotional moment. It took four hours to extract the drill pipe. When the drill head came to the surface, the eager crowd was astonished to see a small bag attached. Inside were two notes. The men could not contain their joy. Chile's president, Sebastián Piñera, had been alerted and arrived just moments later to read the notes and break the news to the world. We are fine inside the shelter, read one of the notes, the 33 of us. Spontaneously, a celebration exploded, first among the families keeping vigil at the mine site, and then as word spread across the country. A World Cup victory or Olympic gold has nothing on news like this. Now the hard work, getting the men out. This huge portable rock drill, normally used to make ventilation shafts, has been brought to the site to bore a 26-inch wide, half-mile long hole down to the men. When it is completed, they'll be raised up one at a time. Yeah, this is the main entrance of the, of the mine. Lawrence Goldburn is Chile's Minister of Mines. How will the men keep their sanity? How will they keep their spirits up if they have to wait four months to be raised? Well, I think it's even worse what they have done in this 17 days. You know, they have been there, 33 people with no um, re good conditions. They are very strong men. They are going to be uh, very well cared in this month. To do that for three months or more, the Chilean government is setting up an elaborate infrastructure to support the men in what has inadvertently become a psychological experiment, testing group dynamics and survival in a confined space. Glucose water, medicine, letters and a few luxuries, playing cards and dominoes games, are being shuttled down through the six-inch contact hole to ease the grim conditions below where the men were starving to death. They are living in the refuge where they took shelter and in adjoining mine tunnels. The heat close to 90 degrees, the humidity more than 90 percent. As more contact holes are made, conditions should improve incrementally. But until that rescue hole reaches the men, they'll 
have to endure a captivity beyond comprehension to most of the world outside. Lila Ramirez has no doubt her husband Mario Gomez can survive. He's been a minor for more than half a century. He began when he was 12. That frame holds the letter he sent her. Dear Lila, it begins, I am okay, thank God. I hope to get out soon. Patience and faith. Those 33 Chilean flags billowing on the hillside by the mine are a constant reminder of the 33 men trapped inside. They have been found, but they have not been rescued. Not yet. I'm Jeffrey Kaufman for Nightline in Copiapó, Chile.